Tired of falling victim to the emotional and psychological manipulation of the narcissist? Do you worry that long-term exposure to these devil-sent individuals will negatively impact your faith? Want to learn how to recognize and resist the manipulative tactics employed by the narcissist? Well, then stick with me, because today we are going to address the 11 demonic mind games wielded by the narcissist and the purpose behind each tactic so you can protect yourself from further abuse. Now, this episode is by no means exhaustive, but it will be extensive. So let's dive in. Narcissists are self-centered, egotistical, fragile individuals who only care about meeting their own needs, often at your expense. They are excellent at playing mind games to gain the upper hand and get what they want in relationships. They don't see you as an individual with feelings. They see you as a pawn for their purpose. They don't care how their behavior impacts you. In fact, it doesn't even occur to them. Does that sound like someone you know? Yes, these people are demonically inspired. And 1 Peter 5.8 reminds us that the devil prowls around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. And I would argue that if we need to be alert for the devil, we also need to be alert to the people he's using. The first demonic mind game that the narcissist plays is the blame game. Now it's easy to forget, but narcissists are fragile individuals and you may have fallen for their false facade, but behind that phony exterior is an empty, shallow parasite who needs to feed off of you for validation. So when that validation dries up and you are trying to have a healthy relationship with healthy confrontation, my friend, you're going to see a very wounded soul. And this is where it goes from broken to bad. Narcissists can skillfully play the victim to garner sympathy and shift blame. They may exaggerate or entirely fabricate situations where they appear to be the innocent party, diverting attention away from their own harmful actions. And whether referring to past failures or current problems, narcissists will rarely accept responsibility for their actions. They blame all the relationship issues on you. They never feel like anything is their fault and they'll even make things up so that you'll be the one to fix their mess, all while playing the victim. They'll even go so far as to blame you if they've cheated on you. Yeah, you drove me to do it because you were never around. You cheated on me first. You said you were unhappy in the relationship, so you left me with no other choice. My friend, you name it, they will have an excuse for their poor behavior and it will always be someone else's fault. And this behavior dates back to the beginning of time when God called out Adam for eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And what did he say? The woman you gave me made me do it. Now, I'm not saying that Adam was a narcissist, but you see how cunning the devil was right from the start. So what's their purpose in the blame game? Well, it's to get you to feel sorry for them so you stop doing what they don't want you to do or start doing what they want. It's all manipulation. Demonic game number two, the trigger game. Do you ever wonder how the narcissist seems to know all of your pain points? Well, that's because they've studied you like a book. Not with the intent to truly get to know you, but for the sheer purpose of gathering information for future use. And that's why they work so hard with the love bombing to win you over, break down your guards, and get you vulnerable. And this can really throw you for a loop, especially if you've been in a relationship with a narcissist who doesn't seem to care or listen to anything that you have to say. But suddenly when you're arguing or they're trying to get their way, they seem to have amazing auto recall. Every mistake you've made, every little thing you said can and will be used against you. Sound familiar? This is how the devil operates. Since he can't be in all places at once, he sends his minions to spy on you. They watch your every move. They listen to your every word so they know exactly how to trigger and trip you. So what's the narcissist's purpose in the trigger game? Their goal is to get you to lose your cool so they can sit back and say, see, look at you. Why are you like this? I'm calm. You're the one losing it. They will intentionally trigger you because they're dysregulated hotheads who won't change. So they have to make you look like the loon. Demonic game number three, the coercion game. If narcissists don't get what they want from you, they will use various forms of manipulation, guilt, shame, triangulation, 
all to get you to feel bad about yourself. Second guess your boundaries and ultimately just give them what they want. And if you think that the narcissist only uses coercion with big ticket items, <laughs> my friend, you might want to think again. This tactic is their go-to with everything, which is why being in a relationship with a narcissist can be so exhausting. If you don't buy something for them that they want, watch out. If you don't respond the way they expected, oh, watch out. If you're not as forthcoming as they expect, they will gaslight you and shame you, my friend. Watch out. If you try to disengage in their tactics, they will get irritable and project onto you all of the emotional nonsense that they are struggling with. They are classic manipulators who use coercion to control you. But did you know that manipulation is actually a form of witchcraft? Whether it's gaslighting or downright trickery, their game always involves deception. And what is deception? It's lying. And we don't need to look any further than John 8, to be reminded of who the father of lies is, Satan. So any lies coming out of someone will be demonically inspired. So what's their purpose in this coercion game? Well, it's to keep you constantly at their emotional beck and call. Demonic game number four is the confusion game. Have you ever had a conversation with a narcissist only to feel like you just talked in circles? Nothing solid ever comes out of a conversation with a narcissist. With their word salads and constant contradictions, their aim is to cause confusion because there is no truth in them. Ask for clarification and you'll get accused of cutting them off and questioning their good motives, or better yet, gaslit for being too demanding and trying to ruin everything. And you may ask a simple question that should have a simple answer, but the narcissist can skillfully take something black or white and turn it into 62 shades of gray. And Genesis 3, 1 through 5 would almost read like a narcissistic narrative. And here's what it says. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other beast of the field that the Lord had made. He said to the woman, did God actually say you shall not eat of any tree in the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden, but God said you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the midst of the garden, neither shall you touch it lest you die. But the serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die. For God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So what's the purpose of the confusion game? To get you to doubt yourself, distort your reality, distrust yourself and God. My friend, if you are being blessed by our time together, would you do me a favor and go ahead and hit that subscribe and notification button down below. And if you are struggling with toxic people of any type, I want to invite you to grab a copy of our free Toxic People Survival Guide. My friend, this is my free gift to you to help you identify and deal with all the difficult people in your life. I'll go ahead and include a link in the description section below. Demonic game number five is the word game. Narcissists are notorious double talkers. They will say one thing and do another. And this flies in the face of the command found in Matthew 537, where it says, let what you say simply be yes or no. Anything else comes from evil. So if you're the type to buy into someone's words instead of evaluating their actions, my friend, you can find yourself in a pretty dangerous trap. And this is a common demonic game that is played by the narcissist. And maybe you've been starved for attention or craving validation. Well, their aim is to get you emotionally hooked. And here's what you need to remember. Feelings get you to buy in to their baloney before their actions show you otherwise. It is the ultimate in trickery. So when their actions don't line up with their words, you're left dazed and confused, but emotionally invested. And this can even show up in day-to-day -day conversations. Do you find yourself constantly reminding the narcissist of what they said prior or what they previously promised you? They are masters at changing the rules of the game to suit themselves, but call them out and you will get met with a barrage of defensive victim-like comments. And they don't like being called out because now you're making them work because it is impossible to keep up with all of their lies and fabrications. So what's the purpose of the word game? 
to get your feelings connected to their words, not their actions. Now, you may still be a little confused thinking, yeah, but they weren't always like this. And sometimes they're so great and so giving. And that leads me to demonic game number six, the giving game. Narcissists are givers? Yes, they actually are, but not in the biblical sense found in 2 Corinthians 9, 7 that says each one must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Instead, the narcissist giving is like that of a puppeteer pulling strings. Every gesture is carefully orchestrated for their self-serving performance. Narcissists are notorious for overpromising and underdelivering. But one of the biggest things that can trip you up is when the narcissist is actually giving. And that's why if you're not careful, you will fall for their self-sacrificing acts. They work very hard to give the impression that they're giving people, but it's not consistent. And maybe you're getting complimented one minute, but insulted the next. Or maybe you received a wonderful gift only to have it thrown in your face later. With sayings like, oh, after all I've done for you, and what about the time when I... And suddenly, their giving doesn't feel so good. I was in a relationship with one such person, and I realized that their giving was costing me way too high of a price. And if the narcissist does something for you or your family, watch out. You will never hear the end of it. So what's the purpose of the giving game? Well, it's to get you to believe that they are generous people that deserve your generosity in return. Demonic game number seven is the projection game. I want you to think of how a projector works. It takes what's on the inside and shines it outward. In a classroom, this makes a great tool, but in a relationship, <laughs> very destructive. You see, despite their outward appearance of confidence, you must remember that behind that false bravado is a fragile, wounded, child that is filled with shame. And in many cases, there is intense hatred. But instead of looking inward, they take what they struggle with and project it outward onto you. They take what they dislike about themselves and they point it towards you. And in some cases, the projection game can actually be a little preemptive, like the spouse who accuses you of cheating, but is actually the one betraying the marriage. The mother who accuses you of being so nitpicky, but it's her who has a problem with everything you do. Or it can be reactive. The projection game is often used when you try to raise an issue or a concern and suddenly they turn the tables and shine the light right on you. It is a more demonic form of defensiveness. Because instead of allowing our Lord to shine his light inward, they redirect it and point the blame onto you. And if you don't know what you're dealing with, this projection game can really mess with your mind because in many cases, what you're being accused of is actually the furthest thing that you struggle with. But in other cases, there actually can be some truth to their accusation. And since you want to be a good person, you want to be a better person, you then look inward and that's exactly where they want you to focus on yourself, not them. And this game has allowed me to recognize the power of Genesis 50, 20. As for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good. That's why it is critical to know yourself. Allow God to test your heart and grow you. And yes, you can even use the accusations of the narcissist to do a self-check. But after you've taken this to the Lord, hang on to his truth, not the fabricated truth of the narcissist. So what's the purpose behind the projection game? Shame is at the core of this game. Their goal is to avoid facing their flaws by focusing on yours, whether real or imagined. Demonic game number eight is the humiliation game. Narcissists in their relentless pursuit of dominance and control will often employ insidious tactics to humiliate those around them. Their need for superiority drives this cunning manipulation of situations where they exploit vulnerabilities, insecurities, all with surgical precision. And they frequently use subtle belittlements, undermining comments, or if given the opportunity, public embarrassment because they seek to diminish the self-worth of others, all while maintaining this facade 
of innocence. They shine in the smear campaigns as the narcissist's goal is not just to assert power, but to revel in the emotional distress they inflict. They derive a demonic level of satisfaction from the perceived superiority gained through the humiliation of their tactics and their targets. It is a toxic game where empathy takes a backseat to their insatiable appetite for dominance. The purpose of this game is to simply elevate themselves. That's all that matters. Demonic game number nine is the manipulation game. Narcissists are master manipulators, employing a range of subtle to not so subtle tactics to control and exploit others. They are incredibly charismatic and use flattery to initially draw people in, or in the case of the covert narcissist, they play the victim in need. And once trust is established, they skillfully manipulate emotions, playing on insecurities and vulnerabilities. Gaslighting is also a common technique, and it involves distorting the reality to make you doubt your perceptions and even your sanity. And narcissists also use guilt, fear, and emotional withdrawal as a weapon to bend others to their will. And if you've ever been stonewalled, you know exactly how it feels. Their manipulation is often masked by a veneer of kindness or concern, making it very challenging for those ensnared to recognize the toxic dynamic that is actually at play. They'll even go so far as to use your desires against you. Ever bring up a problem to a narcissist only to have them threaten you with something you wanted? Oh, well, if we need to deal with this problem, then, well, we shouldn't be taking that vacation. It is a diabolical and demonic attempt to use manipulative tactics to get you to back down. So what's the purpose of the manipulation game? Well, the ultimate goal is to maintain power and feed their insatiable need for admiration, even at the expense of others. Demonic game number 10 is the mirror game. It is likely that at one time, this person made you feel like no one else has ever understood you as much as them. But my friend, it was all a game. You see, mirroring is a tactic used to connect with others. When someone cares about you and knows you, it can be used as a reflection of who you are, much like a mirror. But narcissists are masters at distorting mirroring, kind of like a sick, twisted fun house full of distorted mirrors that may be comical at first, but over time, you can actually have a distorted and demented view of yourself. And that is their goal. Their aim is less about getting to know you and more about gathering data. So in the early phases, they'll make you believe that they like what you like. They'll have the same values as you. They'll even mimic your tone and your mannerisms. All the while, you're feeling like you've just found your soulmate. No, I don't believe in that, by the way. But you just feel like, oh, they just get me. And if you're not aware of what's happening, you can falsely believe that you can let your guard down with this person and just be vulnerable. My friend, that is the mirror game. They're taking all the info and they're filing it away for future use. And that mirror will turn very dark, very quick when they don't get their way. And the purpose of this game is to get you to believe that they can be trusted. So if there's any problems in the relationship, it's your fault. Demonic game number 11, the apology game. After you've had enough, after you can't take it anymore, maybe your bags are packed or you've gone no contact. Now they apologize. But my friend, before you get excited and hopeful, it's likely not genuine. It's not the repentance that God requires for relationship restoration. So what is the difference? Well, one is sorry for their actions and is willing to not only apologize, but to completely turn from that behavior. The other is only sorry that you're no longer tolerating their nonsense. And let's remember that 2 Corinthians 7.10, godly sorrow works repentance. Many say that narcissists can't apologize. I don't believe that's true. They're just unwilling to, unless it suits them. But be careful, because when they do apologize, it can actually throw you for a loop. And I get it. 
You optimistically hope that their apology is this turning point that you've been praying for. But more likely, it is a superficial, vague apology that ends up shifting blame onto external factors or even their victim. So what's the purpose of the apology game? It's to create a false sense of resolution so they can start the entire mind game all over again. So how do you know if a narcissist's apology is actually genuine? Be sure to check out this episode next on the three signs that it's okay to give them another chance. And I want to invite you to grab a copy of our free Toxic People's Survival Guide. My friend, this is my free gift to you. I will go ahead and include a link in the description section below.